Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Stormwatch. I'm your host, Luis DeLeon, and we have a jam-packed show for you today. Scott Bowen gives us a look inside the marketing program. Israel Garcia explores the beauty of living in Milwaukee, and we learn about the Guatemala Study Abroad program from Kyle Rogers. All that and more on the season premiere of Stormwatch. <laughs> Well, it's a new season, winter is almost over, and the Brewers' home opener is less than a month away. New Beginnings is the theme for this week's episode of Stormwatch. Shireen Ghalib is going to give us an exclusive look at the Asian Student Association. But, the, but first, let's check out the marketing program with Scott Bowen. Today on Program Profiles, we will be speaking with instructor Rachel Coppell about the marketing and management program here at MATC. My background prior to coming to MATC was focused in marketing communications and advertising. Um, just prior to coming to MATC, I worked at the Milwaukee Advertising Agency, Laughlin Constable, and I led their digital accounts there. So everything uh, that had to do with digital and interactive media, uh, I worked day to day with clients understanding uh, what their requirements were and then translating that into uh, initiatives for them in digital platforms. Ms. Coppell has an earnest desire to make certain that all of her students have the opportunity to excel in the, in the marketing field. What I aim to do is truly prepare students uh, for one of two courses or paths. Uh, one is to prepare them to further their education so they can be successful if they choose to pursue a bachelor's degree following their education at MATC. Um, and another is to truly prepare them to be successful in industry. And so much of what I do within the classroom uh, is to get them acquainted with tasks that they would encounter uh, if they work in the advertising or marketing communications industry. What's really refreshing and wonderful to hear from students is when I run into them at various industry events and they tell me that through their internships or through their full-time employment opportunities that they actually knew what to do uh, from day one because they had the hands-on experience that they received in my class and at MATC. Ms. Coppell feels that the marketing and management program at MATC is an important benefit to the community and to students as a whole. We provide students with a wide range of courses, um, so they're able to truly explore their interest in a very large field. Um, so they get to, to try out and be exposed to various disciplines uh, within marketing. And that exposure you know, should guide them down the, the correct path in terms of what they would like to choose for their career. Uh, additionally, you know, the instructors are bringing their experiences uh, and their enthusiasm to the classroom. We are all committed to student success and we want our students to be as successful as possible. Um, that is something that, that makes us extremely satisfied and happy is when we st see these students in industry being successful and being able to directly apply what they've learned from our program.
Student organizations are a great way to develop your skills, share interests, or even grow and meet other students. The Asian Student Association, ASA, are located at MATC's downtown campus. We are a group of students here at MATC trying to promote Asian Awareness Month. We are trying to promote better academic achievement here at MATC. The association is involved in many activities and community services, such as raising funds for the association, translation assistance, or even attending other events. Since I joined at the beginning of the semester, I have been involved in a number of activities. On Wednesdays, I help them sell popcorn so that we can fund our trips. A few of us do uh, volunteer for the Hmong American Friendship Association, where we go there and help out with the food pantry. And sometimes I do go there to help other people translate. As it turns out, uh, that they're actually running a thing on uh, Monday mornings in the uh, Vaughan Language Center. He's, he's, the president here is uh, teaching Hmong for free. This year we are going to be going to Minnesota for the UW Concordia for uh, International Hmong Leadership Conference. I enjoy the environment here a lot. Uh, interestingly enough, you don't have to be Asian to join. That surprised me quite a bit. As long as you are a student, whether you are Asian or not, you are more than welcome to join the Student Association. I definitely look forward to being more involved in the ASA activities. If you would like to learn more about the association, you can find them in MATC rooms M224 or M238. We are now going to explore another side of the world. This past winter, some students got a life-changing experience. If you are looking for adventure, then the country of Guatemala might be the place for you. Last four years, here at MATC, the students have been offered a chance to take a trip and study abroad in the amazing, exciting, beautiful country of Guatemala. This has all been possible because of the language coordinator Deborah Esparza. Um, basically, I coordinate the whole trip. So um, when we're down there, um, I did a lot of legwork beforehand, um, coordinating housing and classes and so on. And then when we're down there, I lead the groups to the different um, historical and cultural sites. I supervise the teachers and I supervise the students when we're there in the mornings at the language school. Um, I do a lot of teaching, for example, um, Let's say we're going to the pyramids of Tikal, then what do I do? I'll tell you about it, right? And I'll lead you to this and then I'll say, okay, check this out. This is really cool because da 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 da. So it's kind of a hands on teaching the whole time. Although the students are there to learn, they're also able to explore this beautiful landscape. It's not school all the time. No, we, for example, uh, one of the things that we do is we went um, to an active volcano and we take horses up. And then at the top, um, we roast marshmallows and we watch the volcano kind of spew out a little smoke. Some, never has it been actively, yeah, only at night, but we have seen it at night where it actually is exploding. To go on this trip, you don't have to be a student in the language program. Anyone can go. We actually had a number of different students. We had some students, because um, of how attractive this trip is, we had some students from UWM, we had some students from Eau Claire, we had a student from University of Minnesota. So we do get students from all over in, in addition to our MATC students. While you were there, you can expect to create a strong bond with the wonderful people of the country. Um, they've actually become like a second family to all of us, really, the students and to us. And so just the other day, I wrote to Mario and I said, you know, I have a student who's looking for some a little extra practice and he's going to set up um, online classes for them. Even though they're there to study and adventure, the students and staff make it their mission to help the people that have shown them great hospitality. Another site that we go to is a little town called Esperanza and it's basically kind of a forgotten town. Um, it's at the end of a very long river system and they get the dirtiest water at the very end of the system. 
Um, very poor town and we're trying to figure out ways to actually clean up their water and to help them live more quality lives. And one of the things that we did this year, we helped with water filters and we need to get more water filters for the, for the 28 families that live there. But then we also distributed clothes and so that, and we played with the kids and for the first time in their life, they learned how to bowl from some of the guys in our, our trip. We are now joined in the studio by one of the students who traveled to Guatemala this past December. Please welcome Karina Esparza. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, well, um, so tell us about this whole experience in Guatemala. Um, you went this past December. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned before that another time you did the uh, full three weeks. Mm -hmm. And so explain to us like what exactly you all did. Well. I mean, there's so much to explain that you can't even get it in a short little <laughs> interview. But right. the big thing is the classes. I mean, you can't really, no amount of money can get a one-on-one -on -one session that you get in Guatemala with the volcanoes in the background and everything. And then all the short little excursions, that's where you get the culture and you get the language and you really get into the nitty gritty of what Guatemala is all about. Right, and you <laughs> must have learned a lot about the culture and everything like oh, that. Oh gosh, yeah, so. you just fall in love right away. <laughs> right, right. So uh, what was your favorite place? Obviously, uh, you mentioned before that you probably went all over Guatemala in your mm -hmm. time that you were down there now. Uh, I, I understand that Antigua and Guatemala City are both very different places, mm -hmm. but both very beautiful. Um, so what was your what was your favorite part of um, that? My favorite part is definitely Esperanza. That was something new that we did on this past trip that we didn't do on the trip before. Right. And it's a little town kind of forgotten by the government and kind of tucked away that you wouldn't even see. And it's truly a beautiful little town where they don't have that much and they have the worst water in the world. And yet mm. seeing us walk into that little town, they were absolutely so grateful. And it really makes you appreciate the little things. Right. It mm -hmm. must seeing the look on their faces, I can imagine oh, what, what and it the would little definitely kids. be like. That right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. Now with those children, those local families, uh, you, you stayed with them and by living with them, what did what exactly do you think what you what did you take out from living with them? What did you learn from um, living with them? the biggest thing is just we, how welcome you feel, where you can't walk into any old home here in the States and really feel welcome, where Basically, mi casa, su casa is right. that exactly what you get there. And just feeling at home, and whether you're sick or you're not feeling good or you're homesick, <laughs> I mean, they really do make you feel like like home. <laughs> right. And you, you also mentioned before, along with, this, along with this whole trip to Guatemala, you also went to Honduras. Tell us a little bit about, about that. Yeah, that was something that actually just me and my sister did, but it was all part of the whole getting into the nitty gritty and trying something new. My sister and I went to Honduras and we actually went to Copan, which is mm -hmm. m more Mayan ruins. Right. And that actually was a lot more interesting because it still has like the color and with the, all the details that the Mayans still had in there. And that, that was just, I love history. Right. So that was something that was really cool well, for if me. You're, if you're interested in history and architecture and things like that, it's definitely the place to go. Oh yeah. Now in Central America, would you, would you definitely return there and perhaps go to other countries like El Salvador oh, yeah. and Costa Rica, Panama? Oh places gosh, like yeah. That? So I've been to Guatemala. Now I can cross Honduras off my list. Right. Been to Costa Rica. Definitely would keep going back to Guatemala. I've made so many friends there that are just like family. <laughs> right. And mm -hmm. now, uh, where where did you find out about this trip and how did you get involved in the first mm -hmm. place? Well, actually, my mom. <laughs> Your mom. Okay. Yep. She's great. Um, she takes students down there, but she's done a great job at actually advertising the trip. I mean, any hallway that you walk down, you can see the little Guatemala pamphlet and you can see that it's advertising and you go in the winter and it's something that maybe should be advertised a little bit more because it is so beneficial. Right. And mm -hmm. what, explain some of those benefits that uh, students have if they were able to travel to Central America uh, besides just intaking and learning about the culture, mm -hmm. you know, emotionally, mentally, like what, what are the benefits behind that? Um, mentally slash emotionally, you really get to outstep your boundaries, do something that would really push you outside your comfort zone. Um, so that's something that you definitely, you kind of get to see how far you can take yourself. So that's something that you definitely take down in the long run. And then another thing is the language. I mean, even me, I'm still learning, right. <laughs> yep. catching in the little slangs and stuff like that. So um, and another big thing is 
just how their culture runs and definitely something that you can take back at home. Like, oh my gosh. Right, no, <laughs> Taking definitely. Me back. It, gives, it gives you goosebumps. It's nostalgic. Yeah. And that's the important thing. And um, so aside from that, uh, what, what do the families mean to you after after like leaving them and everything? Do you still keep in contact with people that you met through there? Oh gosh, yeah. I already miss um, the director and his son, Mario and Fernando. They've actually become part of my family now where even today I messaged Fernando and I was like, how are things? How's the weather? Right. And <laughs> they become just like family. Um, you worry about them if something were to happen and you get happy if something good happens. And they definitely do become part of family and friends and someone that you want to go back because right. you, you feel like they're family so you want to go back you want to see how they're doing mm -hmm. well then I mean if you're able to build connections and build relationships that's always a plus oh something to uh, go back to <laughs> uh, it, it, definitely exactly mm -hmm. um so where exactly can st other students find out about this information in mm -hmm. order to study abroad mm -hmm. um m360 that's the language lab mm -hmm. um there's pamphlets in there I'm in there a lot because I'm a Spanish tutor so right. you can see my face and ask <laughs> me about it um, otherwise, um, M, I think it's M392, which is my mom's um, classroom. You can stop in by her, and she will definitely tell you all about it. <laughs> all right. Well, perfect. Well, mm -hmm. Karina, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today uh, and for sharing your experiences <laughs> as well. As we've heard, MATC is always willing to help other people. Shelton Love gives us the scoop of how student unions provide services in our community. Milwaukee Area Technical College Programs and Student Unions offer services to the community. Let's take a look at how the Dental Hygiene Program offers services to the community as well as the Black Student Union. Um, what started us uh, providing services was the fact that our students need to treat patients in order to get through our program and to graduate. And, and so we opened the doors to the community um, really to benefit both people, both the students and the community at large. How long have we been giving services to the community? Hmm. I'm not completely sure, but I believe it's at least 30 years, maybe 40, you know, in total. Uh, what kind of services does the program offer? Um, we offer certainly um, cleaning teeth or prophylaxis, x-rays, um, fluoride treatments. We also do um, what's called scaling and root planing, which is a periodontal um, procedure. Uh, we also have laser treatment that we offer um, for some periodontal patients, that's appropriate as well. Um, and also delivering what's called a chemotherapeutic, which, which means we're basically treating um, diseased gum tissue with um, antibiotics and things like that. Now let's talk to a dental hygiene student. Um, I've done quite a few through the school, um, mostly with different churches. and. Um, we go and talk about dental health. We actually do sealants with children as well. So. Services that we give to the community is just um, basic information about dental health. We give out toothbrushes, floss, toothpaste, things like that. And then we also make recommendations of where they can go to get treatment if they don't have insurance. My future goals as a dental hygienist is to work more with the community. I enjoy the community dental health, so that's like going out, like I said, to different places as far as schools, placing sealants and things like that. So. Now that we have covered the dental hygiene program, let's go over to the Black Student Union. Um, pretty much I am the quote unquote figurehead for the BSU, so I have an e-board that consists of a vice president, secretary, treasurer, sergeant at arms, and we pretty much make sure everything runs smoothly in the BSU, so for me it's just make sure your paperwork gets signed, communicate with people, networking with other organizations. So what does the Black Student Union do in the community? Um, so far in the past, the Black Student Union has done, worked with different outreach programs in the past. Recently now we are working to do, we do a Black Vendors Week. So every semester we do a Vendors Week where we have local businesses come in and they go in there and sell their products here at MATC. We're doing a Meet the Candidates uh, forum and so what that consists of is having the candidates from this election come and speak and inform the MATC students as well as staff and the community of their stance in this election. Um, well right now is the prime time for voting. A lot of people don't know who's running in the election. They don't know, they pretty much don't know who's running the election, what they stand for. They just pretty much go for whoever the majority goes for. 
And so with this, we want to make sure people know when to vote, who to vote for, or who they think they should vote for, and just getting to know their candidates and the people that might become our next mayor, county executive, aldermen, judges. How do we get the community involved in this forum? So, well, there are people out in the community that do not no, yet again, they don't know who's running. They just go for the main people. So what this event we're doing is we're reaching out to the community to come in. That way they get to meet the candidates. They get to ask the people who are running what their stances are and if they if they support them, as well as getting com people in the community to know about Black Student Union and setting up different events with them. Um, aside from Black Vendors Week that we do work with the community as well as this event, um, we are trying to work with the local garden and definitely do work on gardening, urban gardening and teaching our youth to urban garden as well, to teach, the grow gardens in the city. Um, other than that, um, right now I'm currently working with the youth organization and their tutoring program. So outside of that, we're pretty much, it's a lot, a lot of small different organizations that we're working with. So the movie night that we have is pretty much to reach out to the people, at the staff and students at MATC to get them to know who BSU is as well as the relax, like midterms is around that time. It's right after, it's either right, it's right after spring break, and so we want them to come and definitely have a time to chill. So we show movies that pertain to the black community, the black culture as a whole. It's like Fruitville Station, Color Purple, um, Do the Right Thing, School Days, different like movies that, that we all watched growing up as kids. So just having people come and experience and have fun with us. Um, what are the future plans for black students? So right now we want BSU to spread and not just on the downtown campus, but as well as spread to other campuses that are with MATC, partnering up with different colleges here in Milwaukee and outside of Milwaukee, as well as going into communities and making sure that we have a name and that our communities are what we want them to be and that they're up to standard. How can you find out more about Black Student Union? Black Student Union is located at the downtown campus and room M332. We have our meetings every Thursday at 12 and they go pretty much however long the meetings go for. And so if, whenever the door is open, come in, say hi. There are many more services offered by MATC. You can find out about these services at www.matc.edu or, or go to any one of our campuses in a city near you. knowledge that having a college degree increases one's ability to earn money, but the type of degree a person has can affect their lifetime income. On average, someone with a bachelor's degree will make around $3,700 more per year in their lifetime. In some careers, um, associate degree holders uh, can make quite a bit uh, in, in terms of salary um, when related to a four-year degree. In some cases, it can be um, almost identical. Um, in other cases, a baccalaureate degree definitely offers um, a bump in salary over an associate degree, um, and it's something to consider. Yes, 
it's two additional years of education, but that can also translate into higher salary over a lifetime. While having a bachelor's degree versus an associate degree may lead to a higher annual salary, that doesn't necessarily equal more lifetime wealth. When we look at salary and we compare salary between educational levels, it's very easy to simply look at a salary number, but it leaves out a big part of the reality, which is the cost of education. Getting a bachelor's degree, while it can uh, allow a student to earn additional income, it also costs uh, in order to get that additional education. It can also mean uh, potentially missing out on two years of salary. An associate degree holder over a lifetime um, could potentially earn more than a bachelor's degree holder. If you are interested in transferring your credits earned at METC to a four-year institution, visit the Office of Articulation and Transfer in M270. MATC is great with their transferable programs to four-year universities. There are many activities and events coming up this week at MATC, so let's take a look at what's happening. Tuesday, March 8th, the Milwaukee campus hosts Quadrant Series, To Your Credit History Affects Future. Wednesday, March 9th, UW-Green Bay will be at the West Allis campus. Cardinal Stretch will also be visiting the Milwaukee campus, and author Brian Stevenson Stevenson will be having a presentation, so get your tickets now. Thursday, March 10th, Lakeland College will be visiting the West Allis campus. The U.S. naturalization ceremony will be held in the Cooley Auditorium at the Milwaukee campus. There will also be an MATCU tour of the Health Education Center. Monday, March 14th, International Ethnic Fest begins at the Milwaukee campus, and MATC Spring Transfer Days kicks off at the Mequon campus. And that is it for this week's upcoming events. Well, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we are at the end of our show for today. I want to thank all of you for tuning in today, and I'll see you right here next Monday on Stormwatch. Have a great rest of your day.